Welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review with a very exciting release. So this is, as far as I know, it's the third version of this beer. So this is a collaboration between Castle Rock Brewery and Emperor's Brewery. Emperor's Brewery, I actually seen the man the other night, what an amazing fella. Um, top class bloke. Um, his story just um, inspires, it's come from a homebrew background. Unbelievable. So this is Storm in the Emperor's Castle, but it's the Cognac Barrel Aged Over Whole Cherries edition. So, unless I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, apologies. It's the third edition. The last one was aged over vanilla pods. Um, the rum aged over vanilla pods edition. This is the Cognac Barrel Aged Over Whole Cherries. I absolutely love cherries. So this, this sounds box ticking before I've even gone any further. So it says here, it's a double mashed imperial stout, uh, Bucket Heads, and it says something else there, but the writing's really dinkum. Don't just stand there gawking. And uh, on the back it says, the alcohol content is 13.4%, so it's good alcohol content. 4.4 UK units, a double mashed imperial stout, brewed in collaboration with Darth Damien of Emperors, and aged in A dot aop cognac barrels for nine months over whole late season english cherries ingredients water malted barley oats wheat hops yeast muscovado sugar english cherries and uh yeah brewed by castle Watt brewery queensbridge road nottingham ng2 one nb and i was good to the other day because i, I chose there was two festivals on that we could have gone to. And I should have gone to the Bat Fest. And I'm absolutely gutted I didn't go and I went to Woodfest instead. And, uh, well, hmm, less said about that, the better. But anyway, um, right. My second version of this. I'm really excited for this. So let's get me glass. Proper merch. And, um... See how it looks and how it tastes and uh, like I say, right, first thing I can tell you is from nearly two feet away, woof, cherry. It actually went a little bit muted, but the cherry, as soon as I cracked it open, it burst out of the bottle, the aroma that is. So like most big stouts, you do not get a head on them. And let me just spin that camera around because we want a picture. We want to see the bottle as well while we're reviewing it. Well, if the camera play, play fair. There we go. Beautiful. So we'll put it there. Yeah. You see both sides. That's good. Good, good. So, um, obviously black paw a light ring of tan head on the nose boozy cherry wow it's making me mouth water just and i'm only, I'm only sniffing it it's making me mouth water Proper opal fruit. Now you know what's great is you see all these collaborations with Emperor's Brewery and you know for a local brewery to do these collaborations is big. It is big. It puts you on the map. It says this is the world's, um, well it was, I think he said to me the other night he's actually at number two now, but he was, he, he one of the world's best brewers by rating and collaboration with castle rock it's brilliant for castle rock it's brilliant for nottingham and it's brilliant for me at the moment because uh, i get to um review it now 
this is available at castlewatbrewery.com there are only so many bottles there will be bottles in bottle shops as well uh, some may appear on adventure beer local bottle shops around the city brew cavern um the tip in uh crafty one barn bottle shop they're just a few examples it will be in bottle shops as well i presume but limited supplies so if you watch this you like the sound of it will you or if you just want to get another one of the emperor's uh castle rock collabs well worth a try let's get it anyway So the cognac and the cherry combine to deliver some experience. This is, wow. Um, Strength-wise, you can feel that strength straight away. I mean, 13.4%, it is a strong little fella. Um, very much worth the price as well, you know, on, on the bottle. Um Let's dive in and get my um, palate accustomed to this. Oh, that's better. Now starting to wash over. Cherries coming to the front now. And wow, warming all the way down my body then. A warming sensation all the way down. Oh. I'm not washing this one. I do apologise, people who like short reviews. Don't do short reviews. Already six minutes in there. As all these beers are, um, all Imperial Stouts are not necking drinks. They are sipping. They are, you can share this with somebody. You don't have to drink a 13.4% on your own. Although one each is probably a good idea, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things. But um, they are a sipping experience. They, 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 are, they are meant to be the best. That's why barrel-aged imperial stouts, you know, they are what they are. They fetch the price they fetch because um, I've had people say to me before, why are they so expensive? Well, think of the effort that goes into making it. Sit, sit, it takes up a barrel, a space in a warehouse, um, a factory or whatever, for so long. Um, the, t the time and effort that goes into making that, you know, and it commands the price. And it's when it's this quality. And there's a journey to be old because taking 10 15 20 minutes to drink this is is the best thing let the air breathe like a good fine wine you you, you would take a, uh, an initial i mean when i when i burst the bottle open the 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 action the, the burst of cherry was unbelievable it went muted a, a bit after but it's going to be because obviously of the rush from the bottle But then drinking it, the, the cognac element came forward as well as the cherry. The cognac actually pushed the cherry slightly out of the way. Both still there, but whoa. But as as the air gets to it and um, the experience grows, got legs on it, it does as well. You can see the film on the inside of the glass. So when, say, someone says, oh, it's got legs on it, it's like, we're going back. And uh, you do. And I've been on wine courses when I worked at a big supermarket. <clears throat> and you'd swirl the glass like that. And then you can see the film on the inside. This has got a film on the inside. So this was first available actually a week before at Nottingham Craft Beer Festival. It was on tap, on cake, at Nottingham Craft Beer Festival. And the bottles were there as well. And then obviously a week later, it's actually its formal release date in the shops. So um, for me, as I've said before, for, as, a, as a Nottingham person, lifelong Nottingham person, never leave this city. It's too good. 
uh, so proud of the local breweries because, you know, I mean, Castle Rock, you know, that resonates for me because my old workplace was the Arboretum and Nottingham Castle. And um, you know, sadly, the castle's not what it used to be. It's, uh, yeah, I think they've gone a bit too far and got rid of all the flowers, but hey you know, um the flowers did make it. You know, I know that I know where they're going, but um but yeah, uh Castle Rock for me is the most important of our local breweries for history. Um there is no O'Males anymore, there is no Shipstons, although it has appeared back in the nano form. Um O'Males, the that's disappeared, Hardy and Anson's has disappeared. We and for me. Castle Rock says everything about Nottingham and uh, you know as a true Nottingham Nottingham person lover of Nottingham you know for all our good sides maybe bad sides as well but um, yeah and the, and to, to have this collaboration brew with uh, Damien you know such a great bloke as well um, it is great and uh, long live more collaboration brews um, the passion that guy's got is, you know, just listening to him for 20 minutes talking the other night, um, it it's invigorating to hear someone so passionate about uh, brewing. And as a home brewer myself, who wants to go further, um, at some stage at least, probably further, but uh, as a home brewer myself, you know, it's it's really good to see the the transition of of a brewer into somebody with the one of the highest rated breweries in the world you know there's obviously something about the bloke you know and to do it with castle rock as well it's like two pieces of the pie combining and uh yeah you know you can tell a bit of a fan but who isn't a fan of a hometown brewery i mean let's be fair And the reason for talking as well, just to let the let the air get to the to the beer, and try and not get too drunk doing it. <clears throat> Red cards, <clears throat> as you do. Um, but letting the air get to this develops this beer, and that's where that's where taking your time with good beers. It's not it's not a race. It's an enjoying factor, and uh, maybe it's maybe. A stemmed glass would have been better. Would have been a better choice of glass for this particular beer, but nonetheless, I do like to drink a glass out of the right merch if I can, um, and supporting local breweries. If there's anything the last year and a half learned was that um, supporting local is critical, uh, absolutely critical, because local breweries, local jobs. You know, it goes down the line and um, we're all in it together, aren't we? You know, and uh, when you see the stories in the national papers about um, some of the <clears throat> other breweries running out of beer, the local breweries aren't running out of no beer. Okay, plenty of beer in local. Yeah. Maybe they should uh, buy a bit of local and put it in these uh, pubs. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, on the on onwards. You really can taste the both the cognac. I can taste it resonating around your mouth, but also the cherry bit. Cognac still stronger than the cherry, and it makes for an interesting beer for me. It makes for a, a more spirit. Um, a spirity uh, imperial stout with that nice cherry glaze around the edge for me at least am i right or wrong there's i don't know if there's any right or wrong because with beer reviews because you get what you get and you see it as you say it don't you I like with a glass of fine wine, taking your time, 
enjoying. It's all about enjoying the what's in front of you. I mean, the people that have made this, you know, they've gone to great efforts to try and tweak the recipe, aging it over cherries. That's something that um, interests me, the aging over cherries bit. Um, and plums as well. I mean, I'd like to see an imperial plum porter or an imperial plum stout. Um, yeah, <coughs> there's an idea. <coughs> um, maybe the next iteration. <laughs> Um, so warming on the stomach though it really is it's uh now again the cherries come into the to the forefront now so it changes it's changing it's developing as the air is getting to it the 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 beer is changing Now, will we see this at Robin Hood Beer Festival? Now, there's an interesting thing. Um, talking about the beer festival for just for a couple of minutes, let this, let's breathe a little bit more. Robin Hood Beer Festival um, starts on the 13th. Uh, I think that's trade and camera only. I'm not actually a camera member. Ought to be really, didn't I? But uh, um, I'm not, so there you go. Um, it's a monetary thing with me, you know, you can only afford to do what you can afford to do. And paying to be a member of something is just something that I can't afford. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it is what it is, you know. And uh, I don't mind admitting that, you know. Um, I've got a hobby that I do, doing beer reviews, and I have to limit certain things in life. I mean, there's certain things I want to do. I'd like to be a member of Canberra, to be fair. And I'd like to be a member of like, there's a local home brewing uh, thing in Daybrook. Uh, but again, you know, I have to look at the, the monetary side of things. And if you can't do it, you can't do it. It's simple as that. No matter what you like to do, if you can't do it, then you just have to rein yourself in, as it were. But anyway, Robin Hood Beer Festival's coming up. I am sure the good people at Castle Rock will have something planned for it. Uh, lots of beers, uh, probably a stand. Um, I'd love to actually one day, you know, as a fan of Castle Rock, and I am a fan, you know, regardless of anything else, I'm a fan of all my local breweries and what they produce. The going on brewery tours is certainly something that, as a fan of beers, is something I want to do just to see how they make it. It's, see what they do their processes see how it varies from brewery to brewery uh, because obviously the likes of castle rock i'm sure will have massive um tanks where some of the others may not and the the amount and, and see how big the mash tons are and things like that you know if it's done bigger scale you know all done bigger um and then see the developmental side of things, um, like the pilot project kit that they've got. And then seeing seasonal stuff. I mean, for me, my my hope. And, you know, you look into the future, the, the very near future. The scary thing is that will we be looking at another lockdown, some sort of lockdown coming up in the winter months? Uh, this winter, at least. Um, we don't want one. We certainly don't want or need one. But I don't know, you look at around the world and what's happening. And even in America, they're talking about a lockdown. And, um, you know, it is, um, it is a scary thing. And uh, companies banging their beers into, into bottles or cans, uh, seasonal stuff, um, doing deliveries, doing what they're doing. Castle Rock have actually done really well, really, because... What they've done, they've, they've embraced selling their beers at markets. And I think that's an amazing thing. People don't, the the general public, the general public don't realise what's out there. They don't. So to, to be at a market selling Castle Rock beers or any beers, you know, it's a good thing. There's always somebody who'll say, ooh, I haven't had that beer before. 
Oh, I like that one as well. It's always a good thing. Anyway, 20 minutes in, I rattled enough, and uh, net on with the day with you. Right, the cherry is really back now, really back into the um, prominence. I can still smell the old cognac there, the cognac element, but the cherry is certainly back. It's amazing how, how it changed through, through so many minutes of doing the beer review. So, 20 minutes in, the cherry is now above the cognac. Um, big and boozy, rich and decadent. Um, I wouldn't say it was thick, but um, very nice. I like cherry. It's not an in-your-face cherry, though. It's more subtle. It's not trying to be like a bush. It's trying to be big imperial stout with a, the cognac and cherry element in in differing waves waves uh, as it comes it's a complex very complex uh, imperial stout certainly not a five minute review imperial stout So, storm in the Emperor's Castle, Emperor's Brewery, Castle Rock. Wow, that's gone straight to my head as well. Very careful when I walk up here, it's bollocking they're coming. Um, <clears throat> out of five, would I drink this again? All day long, uh, in sips. Um, out of five, for me. I really ought to save some for the wife as well. I've dropped a ball back there. Oh, well. Um, out of five, for me, this beer is, is you know, truly defines um, what good imperial stouts are about. It's that sipping, the sipping, the enjoying, the changing, the developing of the beer as it... As it um, as you're going down the bottle or down the glass, you know, rather, um, it's absolutely top notch, and and I, and I and I would expect it to be from the two breweries that you know named. Um, out of five, if I'm going to give it a score, a good four point six five out of five, cracker. Um, would I would I say to you to get it to try it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Very nice. It's not putting it like that because obviously this is the third iteration as far as I know. Please don't be wrong. Because I'm sure the vanilla rum was the second version. Um, so I've been told. Let's hope I'm not wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, can't win them all. Um, but yeah, cracking beer. And that's it for this beer review. Thank you all for watching, uh, commenting and uh, all that. And, uh, you know, cheers everyone. See you soon.